survival, horror, zombies, infinite flow. Illogical, in an accident, Qin Ya was forced to enter the survival game and challenge for survival. As a non-chieftain with a lucky value of only zero, she works hard while others lie flat, and tries her best to level up and fight monsters. Finally, one day, Qin Yao's name reached its peak all the way from the end of the crane. Survival on a deserted island, primitive world, monster city, supernatural town, zombie crisis, wasteland world keywords of the novel. Survive every day in the survival game without pop-ups, survive every day in the survival game. Download the complete TXT collection, survive every day in the survival game. Read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Zero Zero One Devil's Island 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1001 Devil's Island 1 Qin Yao, Y.A.O., did not expect to experience a journey of time in her lifetime. Even though she was still in a crowded scenic area for a second, she appeared on this deserted island at that moment. Qin Yao looked around and saw an endless sea ahead. The sea was turbulent, like a monster that could eat people. The island was lush with trees, and the beach was wide, estimated to be twenty meters long. She took a few steps, but did not see anyone else on the island. Even though she was wearing shoes, the sand under her feet was still scorching hot. At this moment, the scorching sun was in the air, and even the air was stuffy and hot. Qin Yao's skin on the back of her hands had already turned red from the sun. Name Qin Yao, age 20 gender Female height 168 centimeters weight 50 kilograms strength value 8 out of 100 lucky value 0 out of 100 speed value 8 out of 100 health score 60 out of 100 comprehensive ability 6% out of 100% as Qin Yao was pondering how to save herself, a transparent panel appeared in front of her. In addition to her personal information, there was also a string of numbers in the upper left corner of the panel. 100000-100000 at the bottom of the panel are three information columns, namely, chat, transaction, and storage. Dear friends, welcome to the first stop of the survival game. Devil's Island due to your unexpected death in the real world, in order to obtain a resurrection card, everyone must strive to survive and survive until the final level. The number of participants in this survival game is 100,000, and everyone has a 3.day beginner protection period. During the beginner period, everyone can find 20 survival gifts hidden on the island with hard work and luck. Warning, the game lasts for 3 months after the words on the panel disappeared, a red dot appeared on the chat information bar. As soon as Qin Yao clicked on it, thousands of chat messages popped up. Zhang Cheng. What's going on? What kind of ghost place is this? Why did I suddenly appear on the island? Su Shanshan. Are we dead? I remember traveling in Fairy Town, and then an earthquake occurred. When I woke up again, I was on the island. Huang Wei. Upstairs, is your profile picture yourself. Can we have a private chat? Song Hui. Didn't everyone read the information on the panel? We should have had an accident while traveling and were sent here. As long as we live for three months, we can get a resurrection card and return to our original world. Wang Xiaona. This is just the first stop. After living here for three months, we will have to go to other places to continue our tasks. Fong Kiki What does the meaning of trading and storage on the information column mean? Jiang Sunan After discovering the materials, you can click on the transaction button to exchange the unwanted items with others. I have tried to store them, and you can store your own items inside. The panel shows that the initial storage space is only 5 cubic meters. After completing the task, you can upgrade and the storage space will increase. Qian Fong Fong Stop talking, everyone hurry up and find survival supplies. 
The sky here is extremely cloudy, and it's probably going to rain heavily. Tan Yuzhen. The sun is shining brightly here, and my lucky value is 20. I have already found three survival gift packs. After glancing at the odd egg behind the lucky value, Qin Yao silently closed the chat bar. It was now 2 p.m., and she had to find some survival gift packages before dark. Although she had not been to the island before, she also knew some common sense that there was a large temperature difference between day and night on the island. Although it was now over 30 degrees, it was estimated to be only 5 or 6 degrees by night. There are only some sundries in her backpack, such as wet tissue, lipstick, hand cream, power pack, power cord, sunscreen spray, a bottle of gum, three chocolates and a bottle of mineral water. My phone is probably dropped in the scenic area. The power bank can be used as a flashlight, and I'll keep the charging cable. Maybe it can also be used as waste. After eating a chocolate and taking a sip of water, Qin Yao felt a little stronger. She clicked to store it, and the backpack instantly disappeared. Since there is a three-dot-day novice protection period, she should be safe during these three days. Thinking of this, Qin Yao's courage increased. She broke a branch to play with the surrounding grass, and finally found the first survival gift package under a fern plant. Opening the gift package, a small tent and a user manual came into view. Putting the tent and instruction manual into the storage rack, Qin Yao continued to search for the second survival gift package. The temperature on the island was getting higher and higher, and Qin Yao felt thirsty. However, there was not much water in the bottle, and she dared not drink more. She pursed her lips and continued walking inside. The second gift package was on a tree, with a trunk only the size of her wrist. Qin Yao held the trunk with both hands and shook it wildly. However, after a while, the box fell off. She couldn't wait to open the box, which contained a box of noodles with ten barrels. Unfortunately, when it fell just now, the noodles broke a lot, but it didn't affect her consumption. Two gift packages have been found, and Qin Yao plans to first find a place to set up the tent and then look for other supplies. The forest is definitely not good, the trees are too dense, and the ground is full of weeds. She is worried about snakes, insects, mice, and ants, and most of the plants on the island are poisonous. She is still cautious, it seems that she can only set them up on the beach. However, Qin Yao is also worried that the waves will affect the tent when the tide rises, so she chose several places but is not satisfied. In the end, she found several large stones on the beach on the right side of the island. That's it. After setting up the tent, Qin Yao rested for two minutes. She clicked on the chat bar and didn't look for an hour. There were already tens of thousands of chat messages inside. What surprised her was that the number in the upper left corner had already changed. 1000000/99998 The number of people is already too less. How long has it been since someone died? Qin Yao is not in the mood to watch everyone chat. Some people have already found more than 10 gift packages, while others are complaining about the weather on the island and doing nothing except chatting. Closing the chat bar, Qin Yao quickly got up and entered the forest. The third gift package was placed on a stone in the middle of a swamp, and Qin Yao finally understood why her luck value was zero. She just found a gift package, and her difficulty level was dozens of times higher than others. Qin Yao found a lot of stones by the swamp and put them one by one into the swamp to pave a road. When she received the third gift package, her clothes were already soaked in sweat. The third gift package contained a box of sanitary pads. Qin Yao's eyes lit up, and all exhaustion and resentment disappeared instantly. As a woman, sanitary pads are essential daily necessities, and if she can't use them all, she can trade them for other items. This box of sanitary napkins consists of a total of 30 packages, each containing 10 pieces. Putting the sanitary napkins in the storage rack, Qin Yao's mood had turned sunny after the rain. After his mood improved, 
he quickly found the fourth gift package and opened it to find a board of eggs, totaling thirty. There are eggs and noodles, it seems we can have a hot dinner tonight. The fact proved that Qin Yao was still too happy too early, because in the next few hours, she searched the entire deserted island but couldn't find the fifth gift package. As the sun had already set, she dragged her tired body back to the tent. A new book has arrived, with no CP survival theme. It involves island survival, horror and supernatural, infinite flow, zombies and wasteland. The content is a hodgepodge, and the female protagonist is ordinary, with an imperfect personality and character, but resilient and tenacious. Kneeling to collect, grateful to all readers. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 002 Devil's Island 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2002 Devil's Island 2 at 6 p.m., the temperature on the island plummeted, and some people complained on the chat bar that they didn't find any gift packages today. Some were showing off that they not only found fresh steak, but also shared pictures. For a moment, the person showing off his wealth was attacked by a group, and Qin Yao speculated that a private message greeting him should have exploded. Thinking of something, Qin Yao turned back to the forest and found some dry branches and firewood. Even if she was hungry, she had to start a fire. Otherwise, if it cooled down at night, she might freeze to death in the tent. After all, her sunscreen was very thin, and she didn't have a cotton jacket or quilt to keep warm. After running back and forth seven or eight times, Qin Yao should have enough branches. She found a relatively thick piece of wood, smashed a small hole with a sharp stone, and inserted the leaves into it. She took a branch and began to rub it, because it was her first time drilling into the wood to start a fire. Qin Yao's hands were almost blistering, and the leaves did not grind out sparks. There is no one selling lighters and matches in the trading column, perhaps due to the first day, everyone is still in a wait dot and dot c state. After grinding for almost an hour, the palms of her hands were torn and the leaves finally emitted smoke. Qin Yao was overjoyed and took some dry leaves and sparse branches to cover the sparks. When the fire burned completely, she also breathed a sigh of relief. Qin Yao built a circle of stones around the fire. As night fell and the wind on the island grew stronger, she had to protect the fire. The fire grew stronger and stronger, and the chill on Qin Yao's body dissipated a lot. She found a very thin stone nearby and walked to the shore. She cleaned the sand on the stone and looked at the dark sea. Qin Yao's heart was filled with inexplicable fear. She took two steps back, and the sudden suffocation slowly disappeared. Returning to the tent, Qin Yao placed the stone on top of the fire and baked it. When the seawater was dried, Qin Yao took out the egg from the storage rack. There was a depression in the middle of the stone, and she picked up an egg. After breaking it, she poured the egg liquid into the groove. Qin Yao folded two branches as chopsticks, gently played with the egg liquid, and spread it out. The sound of sizzling rang out, and the egg quickly cooked. Perhaps his stomach was too hungry, Qin Yao actually thought that eggs without oil or salt were also delicious. Adding some firewood to the fire, Qin Yao checked the surrounding environment and confirmed its safety before entering the tent. She used her backpack as a pillow and curled up on the ground, feeling drowsy. Qin Yao quickly fell asleep. Before falling asleep, she always felt like she had forgotten something. The next morning at six o'clock, Qin Yao was awakened by the cold and crawled out of the tent. She looked at the rough sea and couldn't help but sigh. In her dream, she was eating hot pot, but unexpectedly woke up in this place where birds don't poop. Get up and pat off the sand on her body. A cold wind poured in from her neck, causing Qin Yao to shiver and goosebumps on her arms. She quickly went to look at the fire, but fortunately, there was still a piece of the largest piece of wood left, with a little spark on it. Qin Yao quickly dug out a handful of leaves from the sand pile, lit the fire, and reached out her hand to warm the fire. By the way, panel. Qin Yao finally remembered what she had forgotten. 
Before going to bed last night, she actually forgot to look at the information in the chat bar. It's 6.30 in the morning, and there's already a little red light on the sea level. The sun is about to rise, and someone is already talking in the chat bar. Qin Yao glanced at the upper left corner and the number has indeed changed, 1000000-99989. From last night until now, the number of people has decreased by 9. Qin Yao opened her personal profile again, but unexpectedly her information also changed. Weight. 49.6 kg strength value. 9 lucky value. 2 speed value. 8 health value. 57 comprehensive ability. 7% lucky value increased by 2 points, but why did you lose 4 tails of weight? Qin Yao didn't hesitate too much and glanced at the chat bar again. She didn't see any valuable information, so she focused on the fire. At 7 o'clock, the sun rose from the sea level, and the temperature on the island slowly rose. Qin Yao baked two eggs, finished eating them, and got up and entered the forest. The novice protection period was only two days left, and there were still 16 survival gift packages that she couldn't find. She had to hurry up. Entering the forest, Qin Yao was stirred by climbing vines on the ground. When she fell to the ground, she happened to see the gift package hidden inside the vines. The fifth gift package was very large, and Qin Yao's expectations had already been fulfilled. She hoped that it contained the cotton jacket and quilt she wanted. After praying with his hands clasped together, Qin Yao dared to open the gift package. When he opened it, he saw the quilt, mattress, and pillow, and Qin Yao grinned. Today's luck is really good, keep going. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a cotton jacket, but she still has a chance. The sixth gift package was also quickly found, and Qin Yao began to suspect that he had upgraded from a non-chieftain to a European emperor. He carefully opened the gift package, and an iron pot appeared in front of him. Qin Yao covered his mouth to prevent himself from screaming. There's a pot now, she wants to eat boiled noodles tonight. Yesterday, she roughly estimated the land area of the island, and the beach should be three acres. There are various types of trees on the island, many of which are highly toxic. Qin Yao was particularly careful when walking, and besides climbing vines, there was also a lot of moss on the ground. Qin Yao had already fallen several times, and his pants were covered in dry mud. Qin Yao's hair was a bit long, and she used a branch to tie it up and fix it behind her head. Thinking that she appeared here inexplicably, she felt a bit discouraged. She is in her third year of college and is studying a very niche funeral major. Yesterday, just in time for the Qixi festival and the weekend, her roommates all went on a date. Qin Yao originally wanted to sleep in the dormitory for a day, but early in the morning, she received a phone call from one of her roommates. The other party cried that they had broken up with her boyfriend and asked Qin Yao to accompany her to Fairy Town to relax. Qin Yao agreed to attend the appointment, and when she arrived in Fairy Town, her roommate smiled and called her, saying that she had made up with her boyfriend. Qin Yao turned her black. Qin Yao climbed halfway up the mountain with anger and resentment, but to her surprise, a sudden earthquake would bring her all here. I don't know how the school will handle her affairs. It's useless to think about these things now. It's better to find other survival packages first and work hard to survive. Qin Yao gathered her spirits and bypassed a towering tree before arriving at a brightly blooming flower cluster. The seventh gift package was inside the cluster, but the flowers had strange shapes, with red flowers resembling human faces and green liquid flowing out of the core. Qin Yao dared not act recklessly. She found a relatively long branch and planned to use it to take out the gift package. The gift package was very large, and Qin Yao pushed several times with a branch without pushing it. She stomped on the flower with her foot, and the facial features of the flower twisted together in an instant. The green liquid flowed onto the ground, and a foul smell hit her face. Qin Yao was driven back by the foul smell, 
but she remembered that the gift package was still among the flowers. She gritted her teeth, stomped on all the remaining flowers, rushed over with one go, picked up the gift package, and ran away. Ouch! Qin Yao ran for more than ten meters and put down his gift package, supporting the nearby tree to vomit wildly. This flower is also too smelly, even worse than the dry toilet covered with white maggots in summer. The exhausted Qin Yao squatted down and began to unpack the gift package. Seeing the outdoor survival equipment inside, she felt that the pain she had just endured was worth it. End of this chapter Chapter 3 003 Devil's Island 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3003 Devil's Island 3 Qin Yao opened the outdoor survival equipment box, which contained a very complete set of items, including an engineering axe, an engineering shovel, a machete, a multi-kinetic folding knife, a flashlight, a fifth battery, a tactical pen, a survival blanket, a flint, a whistle, a survival rope, a compass, and ten small candles. There was a flint now, so there was no need to drill into wood to start a fire in the future. Qin Yao smiled and closed the box, put it in the storage rack, and continued walking forward. The morning passed quickly, and she had found three gift packages. Qin Yao was hungry and thirsty, with a burning throat. If she didn't drink water, she might faint. Qin Yao walked up to a big tree and wiped the hot sweat from her forehead. There was no fresh water on the island, and if she wanted to drink water, she could only find a way to filter the seawater by opening a gift package with water. However, at the moment, she did not have any tools or equipment. There is still half a bottle of mineral water left in her backpack, and she should be able to hold on until tomorrow. The climbing plants on the ground are not poisonous. Qin Yao took out a folding knife and cut some vines. In order to prevent heatstroke, she had to take some protective measures and weave a hat made of vines to provide shade. Although it was a bit crude, wearing the hat made her much cooler. Qin Yao pinched a folding knife and stick through a low wood. While she still had energy, she had to quickly find other gift packages. Just now, she looked at the eye panel and her health value had dropped to 55, indicating signs of heatstroke and fatigue in her body. Qin Yao pursed her already skinned lips and opened the trading board again. Coincidentally, someone was asking if there were sanitary napkins and ibuprofen. The other person asked for half an hour but did not receive a reply. Qin Yao raised his eyebrows, was it only she who opened the sanitary napkin? Qin Yao clicked on the other person's profile picture and entered the private chat interface. She took the initiative to send a message over. Qin Yao. Hello, do you still need sanitary napkins? The other party replied to her quickly. Song Jing. What do you need? How much do you have? Qin Yao did not directly answer this question. Qin Yao. Do you have water, Song Jing? I have water. I opened ten gift packages yesterday all of which are mineral water. Qin Yao doesn't know whether to say she's lucky or unlucky, but since the other party has water, this deal will be easy to negotiate. Qin Yao. Do you want to trade three sanitary napkins for one bottle of water? Song Jing. Do you have ibuprofen? My stomach hurts so much that I can't walk anymore. Qin Yao was about to reply, but she didn't think of anything. She took out her backpack and found a box of ibuprofen in the middle of it. She counted it and there were still ten left. Qin Yao. Yes, one medicine has three bottles of water. The other party remained silent for a long time, and just as Qin Yao thought the transaction had failed, the other party's message popped up. Song Jing. I need two pills and nine sanitary pads. Qin Yao. Okay. Qin Yao clicked on the transaction item, and two medicines and nine sanitary pads were automatically transported from the storage column to the transaction column. Both parties confirmed that the item was correct, and then clicked again to confirm the transaction. The transaction was completed, and Qin Yao's feet instantly added nine bottles of water. 
With water, Qin Yao drank it without any psychological burden. After drinking the entire bottle, she felt like she had come to life. She hiccuped and Qin Yao put the water and bottle in the storage bin. Now that she had the strength, she could search for the remaining gift packages wholeheartedly. The eighth gift package was inside a thorny bush, and Qin Yao had an engineer's axe. Solving these thorns was a piece of cake. She moved her wrist, and the axe was very sharp. With one strike, the roots of the thorns were all cut off. In just two minutes, Qin Yao rescued the eighth gift package. Fishing Rod Thinking of the endless sea in front of the beach, Qin Yao simply put away the fishing rod. Since she was seeking biological resources, she believed that this fishing rod must have its purpose. The ninth gift package is located in the grass not far away, containing 120 rolls of tissue paper. It's great, the toilet crisis has been resolved, and there's no need to worry about using leaves or stones anymore. It's noon now, and the island is scorching with scorching sun. Qin Yao is planning to go back to the beach to eat something. She tied a bundle of dry firewood with a charging cable and returned to the beach only to find that her tent and fire were buried in sand. The flint was indeed effective, and she easily lit the fire. Qin Yao placed the iron pot on the fire and wiped it with a tissue. She poured in a bottle of water, waited for the water to boil, added an egg, and added a small handful of noodles. Although there was no oil or salt, at least she had a hot meal. After tidying up the iron pot, Qin Yao walked into the tent to rest for a while. She clicked on the chat bar, and the number of people in the upper left corner decreased by four. 1000000 slash 99985 Qin Yao continued to read the chat content. Wherever there were non-chieftains, there were European emperors. Some opened empty boxes, while others opened rice and sesame oil. They were all survivors, but their situations were completely different. The girl who was trading with her just now asked again in the trading section if there was any food. It seems that she hasn't opened anything except for water. Some people also say they want to go into the sea to catch fish. Anyway, during the novice protection period, there should be no accidents. Qin Yao looked at the decreasing number in the upper left corner and didn't say anything. After resting for ten minutes, Qin Yao put on a wilted vine hat and entered the forest. Her long pants and sports shoes were very stuffy, and her socks were probably smelly. Since arriving on the island, she has not washed her teeth. Qin Yao looked at her already greasy hair, and her face was filled with the words, Life cannot be loved. In the afternoon, she decided to change the entrance. Twenty large gift packages would definitely not be hidden in one area. The more remote the place is, the more they might be hidden. Qin Yao walked around from the right side of the beach, and three minutes later, Looking at the three large boxes on the beach ahead, she thought she had read them wrong and rubbed her eyes in disbelief. Qin Yao ran excitedly to the front of the box, looking at the familiar four characters of survival supplies on the box. She was both surprised and delighted, and quickly opened the box. The first big gift package was a medicine box, heatstroke medicine, allergy medicine, painkillers, anti-inflammatory drugs, gauze, iodine, alcohol, and bandages, all of which were available. Qin Yao held down her wildly beating heart and continued to open the second box. Inside was a box of snake repellent powder, which tasted very pungent. Qin Yao quickly closed the box. Blessed by Bodhisattva, let me open a box of oil, salt, soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar. Please. Qin Yao bowed in all four directions before devoutly opening the third box. She saw a whole set of raincoats and shoes inside, and Qin Yao was not disappointed. At least her gift bag was full of supplies. Thinking of this, she regained her energy and put everything in the storage bin. She has already found twelve gift packages, and today she is really lucky. Qin Yao's pace has become much easier. As soon as she entered the forest, Qin Yao heard a sound of, sizzle sizzle. She was startled and thought she had encountered snakes, insects, birds, 
and beasts, but after observing for a while, she didn't see anything. At this moment, a gust of wind blew and the sound of sizzle 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 sounded again. Qin Yao turned around and finally found a soapberry tree in the weeds. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 004 Devil's Island 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4004 Devil's Island 4 The sound just now turned out to be the sound of soap pods colliding with each other. The soap pods are very useful, and she needs to pick some back. Using an axe to cut a path, Qin Yao cautiously approached the soapberry tree. A thorn had just scratched her face and left many blood marks, but Qin Yao ignored it. She took out a box and placed it on the ground, then focused on picking the soapberry. If she couldn't reach it, she pressed down the branches and waited for her to finish picking the soapberry from the tree. An hour had passed, and the soapberry had been packed in several boxes, all of which were stored in the storage rack. Qin Yao was about to walk forward when she saw someone looking for her in the private message area of the chat bar on the panel. It's the girl who was chatting privately just now. Song Jing. Hello, are you there? Qin Yao. In. Song Jing. Do you have any extra lighters? I want to boil water, but there is no ignition source. Qin Yao. No. Song Jing. I exchanged water with you, and after eating the ibuprofen you gave me, my stomach finally stopped hurting. I just found three big gift packages, including an iron pot, instant noodles, and chocolate. Everyone's avatar is a photo of themselves. The other person looks young, no wonder they have no defense against others. They explain everything they find so clearly to themselves. Although Qin Yao knows that all survivors are on different islands, she still feels that she should not disclose too much information about herself. Qin Yao. There are no extra lighters, you can try drilling into wood to start a fire. Song Jing. Alright, I've contacted a lot of people, but only you patiently replied to me. Our avatars are all in person, and many men with lower heads have sent me foul-smelling messages. There are also many women who privately chat with me, saying that I'm shameless about changing sanitary napkins in the trading column. Qin Yao has read these messages in the chat bar, and there is always a group of scumbags among 100,000 people. Qin Yao is not surprised. She did not reply, and the other party was somewhat disappointed. However, they still told Qin Yao that they could exchange water with her if needed. Qin Yao continued into the mountain, and the thirteenth gift package was located in the middle of a withered tree in front of him. The box was not large, but its weight was somewhat surprising. Upon opening it, there was a box of warm babies inside, probably two hundred. Thinking of the temperature last night, Qin Yao still had some lingering fear. If it weren't for her setting the fire, she might have frozen to death in her sleep last night. At three o'clock in the afternoon, the temperature on the island exceeded 40 degrees, and a high temperature warning appeared on the panel. In the chat bar, many people were frantically using foul language. Some begged to quit the game and let him go home, while others offered conditions. As long as he was asked to leave, he was willing to donate one billion yuan. Seeing one billion yuan, Qin Yao was moved. However, apart from these people constantly clamoring, no system information popped up on the panel. Qin Yao took a sip of water and continued to search for the remaining gift package. At this moment, she felt that the ground under her feet was a bit soft. When she squatted down to check, she found that the moss on the bottom of her feet had been shoveled. Qin Yao took out an engineering shovel and carefully scooped open the surface moss and soil. In less than a minute, a box appeared in front of Qin Yao. She didn't expect this game to be so crazy that even hiding a material could be hidden in a pit, thinking of this, she plans to pay more attention to her feet when searching for the remaining gift packages later. Dragging the box out, Qin Yao felt dizzy and dizzy. Her eyes were in darkness, and she squatted on the ground for a long time before recovering. She took a big sip of Huxiang Jingqi water from the medicine box and swallowed it. 
Qin Yao endured nausea and took another sip of water. Just now, she almost thought she was going to faint or die suddenly, and her head was already scorching from the sun. Qin Yao took out the keychain from his backpack and scraped it hard at his neck. A red Sha appeared, and Qin Yao put away the keychain. She stood up to confirm that she was not dizzy before opening the box to check the contents. It was an iron stove with a chimney, which was more useful than a fire. Qin Yao happily put it away. Hot sweat flowed down his cheeks and soaked him in the area where he had just scraped the skin. His neck was tingling, and Qin Yao took out a wet tissue from his backpack and casually wiped it twice. The forest was very quiet, without even the chirping of birds and insects. Qin Yao remembered when she was in her freshman year. On weekends, she and her roommates often went hiking. At that time, the other three roommates were all single and we got along very well. However, in the second year, they gradually got out of singlehood. Qin Yao didn't want to be a light bulb, so she consciously distanced herself from them. She originally thought she was a person who could withstand loneliness and boredom, but now she is the only one on the entire island. Qin Yao's heart is not as calm as it appears on the surface, and she is very panicked. Qin Yao's mood suddenly dropped. She didn't know if she could hold on for three months, and even if she did, she wasn't sure if she could pass the survival game smoothly. Before this, she was just an ordinary college student. She wasn't particularly intelligent, and her luck and physical strength were also average. Compared to others, she really didn't have much chance of winning. But giving up is not her personality. Qin Yao still has a strong determination not to give up. She is only 20 years old, and she wants to live on. Until 6 p.m. in the evening, Qin Yao did not find any more gift packages. As the sun was about to set, she tied a bundle of firewood as usual. On the way back to the beach, she saw waves rushing towards the shore one after another. After the waves receded, they left behind a few fish, shrimp, crabs, and shells. Qin Yao threw away the firewood directly, took out a small box from the storage rack, and then picked up all the edible fish and shrimp. Qin Yao is from an inland area. This is the first time she has seen the sea with her own eyes. She was worried about getting her shoes wet, so she took off her shoes and socks. Immediately, a sour smell penetrated her nose and went straight to the sky. Qin Yao vomited for a moment. She was almost dizzy from the smell of her feet, and her sports shoes were not breathable. In addition, she had walked too much in the past two days, sweating too much, and her feet smelled. Qin Yao stood in the seawater, worried that the fish and shrimp in the sea might smell her feet and get poisoned. The box is made of plastic material, and with a little water added, these fish can be kept. If they can't finish eating, they can also be exchanged for supplies. By the time Qin Yao dragged the box back to the tent, she was so tired that her legs were trembling. As it was getting dark, she quickly lit up the fire and had already digested the lunch. Qin Yao was now so hungry that her eyes turned green. In order to save water, Qin Yao planned to have grilled fish at night. She caught a few fish and walked to the shore. After handling them, she strung them with a stick and directly grilled them on the fire. When the fish were cooked, Qin Yao opened the panel. From this afternoon until now, the number of people in the upper left corner has not changed, but the chat bar seems to be very lively. Su Meng. What about that Beisan named Xinjiang? You're too scared. Didn't you be very impressive when you sent me a private message? Are there any management personnel? Can you deal with this subordinate man? The chat bar was full, uh. Most people were joining in the fun, and only a few women came forward to accuse Xinjiang of harassing them. Qin Yao had sharp eyes and saw Song Jing among them at a glance. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. 005 Devil's Island 5. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5005 Devil's Island 5 Shinjichiang. It's just a joke. I haven't met you guys yet, so stingy. 
Chen Lu. Who's joking with you? You can even create rumors through photos, scumbag. Shen Jiqiang. Little girl, don't be so angry. If you get so angry, I will feel heartbroken. They all said it was just a joke. Why are you so serious? Looking at the greasy speech on the screen, Qin Yao clicked on Shen Jiqiang's profile picture and found that he was a middle-aged man in his forties, bald and oily, with a wrinkled black short-sleeved shirt, black trousers, and a pair of pointed leather shoes that could kick people to death. Qin Yao searched for a long time, but did not see the entrance for complaints and reports. Just then, Shen Jiqiang, who was still disgusted by everyone in the chat bar, suddenly stopped speaking. His profile picture suddenly went black. Just as everyone was looking confused, a warning appeared in the middle of the panel. Player Shin Jiqiang did not abide by the game rules, harassed female players, disrupted the game order, and the system will punish them for being erased. The number in the upper left corner has indeed decreased by one, indicating that Shin Jiqiang has already gone offline. Shin Jiqiang was frightened by the system's erasure, which frightened everyone in the chat bar. Everyone spoke politely in an instant, and no one expected that the system's punishment would be so severe. It was not a verbal warning, but a direct erasure. Shen Jiqiang's profile picture had already been removed from the chat bar. At this moment, a burning smell penetrated Qin Yao's nose. She quickly flipped over the grilled fish on the fire. Although the fish was small, its flesh was fresh and tender, and she swallowed her saliva helplessly. Today's personal information has been updated, Qin Yao quickly clicked to view it. Weight 49.3 kg strength value 10 lucky value 5 speed value 8 health value 55 comprehensive ability 8% looking at the weight loss again, Qin Yao felt that the fish and meat in her mouth were no longer fragrant. It was only the second day, and her weight had dropped by seven tails. If she continued at this rate, she would become a skeleton in less than three months. At the same time as her weight loss, her health value is also declining. Qin Yao's expression is solemn, indicating that her body lacks nutrition. She can only rely on tomorrow for hope and the remaining six survival gift packages hope to be filled with water and oil and salt. After finishing all the grilled fish, Qin Yao stuffed the remaining firewood into the fire. It was now 8.30 p.m., and the sea level was stormy with a howling sound like a wild ghost. Qin Yao dragged the vines she had cut back today to the side of the fire. She tried to recall what the grass shoes looked like, and then tried to weave them. The sneakers were stuffy and hot, and after sweating, the socks and feet were wet. After a whole day, the foot odor was gone, and her toes and soles were soaked in sweat until they turned white and wrinkled. Peeling off the outer skin of the vine, Qin Yao baked the bare vine on top of the fire until it dripped with juice. She then dragged the vine to the shore and soaked the steaming vine in seawater for three minutes before removing it. At this point, the vine was not only smooth, soft, but also very resilient. Although the finished grass shoes woven for the first time may not look very good, they can still be worn on the feet. Qin Yao carried the woven grass shoes into the tent. She looked at the time on the eye panel and saw that it was already 10 o'clock. There was a strong wind of six levels at night, and the temperature was now above zero six degrees. Qin Yao glanced at the chat bar and found that the conversation was all about irrelevant topics. She closed the panel, untied the coiled hair, and because there was no comb, Qin Yao took out a folding knife and cut a piece of fabric from the hem of the T-dot shirt to prevent hair from getting tangled. After braiding the hair into braids, she tied the hair at the end of the braid with the fabric and tossed it around for a whole day. She was exhausted and lay down for less than a minute before falling asleep. Today is the third day of the beginner's period, and Qin Yao woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning. In order to supplement her nutrition, she decided to cook a bowl of egg noodles in the morning, pour a bottle of water into an iron pot, and take advantage of the water boiling gap. Qin Yao took out two small fish from the water tank and went to the shore to treat them. 
After she finished treating the small fish and they came back, the water boiled, and the eggs were added before the noodles. The two fish were skewered and grilled next to the fire. When the noodles were cooked soft, the fish could also be eaten. The sea salt on the fish was not washed clean and mixed with noodles with a slight salty taste, which is very average. After breakfast, Qin Yao put the mattresses and blankets in the tent into the storage rack. Before dawn, she took out a flashlight and went into the forest. The tree shadows swayed, and the sea breeze was blowing. As soon as Qin Yao walked into the forest, he saw the fifteenth gift package. The box was large and heavy, and Qin Yao couldn't help but feel excited. She bit the flashlight in her mouth, opened the box with both hands, and saw the black military crossbows and twenty crossbow arrows inside. Qin Yao thought to himself that if this thing were auctioned off, it would probably sell for hundreds of thousands. Qin Yao was the first to see a cold weapon with such a strong sense of oppression, with a crossbow weighing about 3 kilograms and a range of up to 600 meters. Before this, Qin Yao had never been in contact with these things, but the moment she saw this crossbow, she felt her blood boiling all over her body. At this point, a system message appeared on the panel, and Qin Yao lowered his crossbow and looked carefully. Today is the last day of the beginner protection period. Before midnight, players who find all survival packages will receive a small gift. Players who fail to complete tasks will be punished. Good luck to everyone. Seeing the words, punishment, Qin Yao thought of Shen Jiqiang. She frowned and quickly put away her crossbow to continue searching for the remaining five gift packages. Fortunately, she had good luck today. Less than ten meters ahead, she saw the sixteenth survival gift pack. Open the gift package, inside is a twenty-pound can of lard. Oil is a necessity for survival. Qin Yao carefully collected it and continued walking ten meters. The seventeenth survival gift package was placed on a nearby stone. Did she open it today? Opening the gift package and looking at the military coat inside, Qin Yao's eyes lit up instantly. Great, she finally has clothes. She has been shivering from the cold these past two nights, and the T-dot shirt and sunscreen on her body are too thin to keep warm at all. At this moment it was already dawn and she still had three big gift packages to find. Qin Yao dared not slack off, as no one knew what the system's punishment was. Once she was erased, she would never be able to return to the real world. Thinking of this, Qin Yao's gaze became firm as she continued to walk forward wearing grass shoes. At nine o'clock in the morning, the sunlight passed through the trees and landed on Qin Yao. She was a bit dizzy from the sun. At that moment, she accidentally stepped on it and fell into a five-meter deep pit. Oh dear. Fortunately, her buttocks landed first. If she were head down, she probably would have to explain it here today. Qin Yao rubbed her sore buttocks. The pit was not only deep, but also quite wide inside. After her eyes adapted to the darkness inside, she took out a flashlight to check the situation inside the pit. What does it mean to have nowhere to find a place to break through iron shoes? It takes no effort to get it. Qin Yao looked at the three big gift packages at the bottom and didn't care about his sore buttocks, so he crossed his waist and burst into laughter. End of this chapter Chapter 6 006 Devil's Island 6 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6006 Devil's Island 6 The remaining three survival gift packages are all here. Qin Yao opened them one by one. The first gift package is toiletries, toothpaste, toothbrush, and soap. The second gift package is a seawater filter, which is about the size of a water dispenser. It can not only purify seawater but also filter sea salt, but this thing needs to generate electricity. She currently does not have a power generation device, so this equipment is not in use. The third gift package is a folding bathtub, without water, what is the use of having a bathtub? However, finding all the gift packages meant that she didn't need to be punished. 
Qin Yao was only happy for two seconds, and her smile froze as she looked at the deep pit about five meters high. That's it, how is she going to get out? Qin Yao quickly observed the inner wall of the deep pit. Fortunately, there were many protruding stones on the wall. She tried and found that the stones were firmly embedded and should not loosen. She put the gift package in the storage rack, and Qin Yao bit the flashlight in her mouth. She rubbed her palm to confirm that there was no sweat, then grabbed the stone above her head and started climbing with force. After stepping on the stone at the point of force, Qin Yao breathed a sigh of relief and succeeded in the first step. She couldn't rest, she had to climb up with all her might, otherwise if she lost her strength, her whole body would fall down. At this point, Qin Yao's forehead and back were already sweating hot, and his T-dot shirt and sunscreen were tightly attached to his body. Qin Yao reached out his right hand to reach for the stone on top. Just as she was about to hit the stone, his feet slipped away from the point of force, and Qin Yao's left hand could only tightly grasp the stone. She bit the flashlight, and the veins around her neck were already bulging. The left finger was already in excruciating pain, and Qin Yao endured the pain and focused his body on his leg. One, two, three. Just as she finished reciting the three words in her heart, she kicked her left foot heavily towards the wall. At this moment, her body would swing to the right. She used this second to land her right leg on the stone at the point of focus, and her right hand could just grab the stone on it. Everything was as she had predicted. After grabbing the stone with her right hand, Qin Yao quickly released her left hand. Her fingers were bleeding, but she seemed to not feel the pain. Her body tilted slightly to the right and continued to use the same method to reach the stone on top with her left hand. It was almost two meters away before climbing out. Qin Yao secretly cheered herself up, and sweat dripped into her eyes from her forehead. She endured the piercing pain as she continued to climb upwards. However, as she approached one meter of stone, there were no more stones on the wall. Qin Yao remained silent for two seconds before taking out the soldier's axe from the storage rack. She grabbed the handle with her right hand and threw it up with all her might. The axe was chopped to the side, and Qin Yao's expression was joyful. With the axe, she quickly climbed up. Lying on the ground, Qin Yao was panting heavily, his heart beating wildly in his chest, and his ten fingers were bleeding. However, compared to exhaustion and pain, Qin Yao felt incredibly relaxed in his heart. At this moment, the panel prompt sound came on, and Qin Yao looked up and saw a system message appearing on her personal page. Contestant Qin Yao has successfully found 20 survival gift packs, and the system will distribute rewards for you. Before Qin Yao could react, a particularly large box appeared next to her. Qin Yao quickly got up from the ground and opened the box, which contained a small generator and 20 liters of engine oil. Qin Yao grinned. Returning to the beach, Qin Yao took out a plastic box and hurriedly went to the beach to fetch water. She wanted to try and filter out the seawater. Pour a liter of engine oil into the generator, connect the seawater filter, and press the generator start button. The sound of woo woo comes from the generator, and the screen above the seawater filter lights up. After a few minutes, fresh water starts to flow out of the water tank at the outlet, while a light yellow liquid flows out from the other outlet. The instruction manual states that a light yellow liquid is filtered salt water, which crystallizes when exposed to sunlight. The white crystals are salt and can be consumed directly. As for the filtered wastewater, it has already flowed out of the filter through the pipeline. After testing, only 2 liters of fresh water can be filtered out from 20 liters of seawater. As for the salt, we will have to wait until it dries tomorrow to know. With the seawater filter, Qin Yao's heart can finally relax. She has been worried about drinking water for the past two days. If the seawater filter is not turned on today, she will have to exchange water with others using supplies. With oil and water, Qin Yao planned to cook noodles with fish soup at night. She went to the beach to pick up a few small fish, and after dealing with them, she slowly returned to the fire. 
use an iron stove to heat up the oil. Once the oil is hot, add a few fish and fry until both sides are golden brown. Take out the fish bones and thorns and pour a bottle of water into the pot. After the soup boils, add the noodles. Tomorrow she must get up early to sun dry the salt. In order to save water and preserve the salty taste on the sea fish, Qin Yao only hastily cleaned the fish, so in addition to the salty taste, the fish also has a faint fishy smell. After finishing a bowl of hot soup, Qin Yao let out a satisfying hiccup. The days when she could eat and drink enough were so happy. She didn't expect much, just enough to eat every day. If only there were rice and vegetables, as a southerner, not eating rice for a day would make me feel uncomfortable all over. After dinner, Qin Yao quickly washed the iron pot. She took out the bathtub and poured the filtered water into it to store. She didn't dare to indulge in taking a shower, after all, the fresh water was filtered too slowly and the water output was not high. Let's wash her face and brush her teeth first. After washing up, Qin Yao found another box and put the socks and sports shoes inside. The soap pods had not been processed yet. Qin Yao took out a wet tissue, put the soap inside the wet tissue, and vigorously rubbed it until foam was formed. She then stopped and put the wet tissue in the box. Without a shoe brush, she could only soak it all night. Tomorrow morning, she took it out and rinsed it with water. By the way, underwear and underwear also need to be cleaned. Qin Yao changed into a military coat, soaked it in hot water for a few minutes, and then washed it clean with soap. He took the underwear and underwear inside the tent, which was too windy and sandy outside. They were left to air dry, and they must have been blown away by the wind tomorrow morning. Before going to bed, Qin Yao checked around and found no abnormalities before dragging his sore body into the tent. Oh my, my old waist. When I was in the deep pit today, I dodged to my waist. When I was busy, I didn't feel any pain. Now that I have free time, my whole body is starting to feel uncomfortable. Looking back on the ten or so minutes I crawled out of the pit today, Qin Yao didn't expect to burst out with such a strong desire for survival. Five meters may not seem high, but in fact, it is as high as a floor. I don't know what Qin Yao will encounter starting tomorrow, but after the novice protection period ends, there should be danger everywhere on the island, and she must be cautious and careful. Open the panel, Qin Yao is the first to click on personal information. Weight. 49.6 kg strength value. 11 lucky value. 6 speed value. 9 health value. 56 comprehensive ability. 9% seeing that all the values were rising, Qin Yao finally felt at ease. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. 007 Devil's Island 7. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7007 Devil's Island 7 In the chat bar, some people are gloating while others are feeling anxious. It is now 11 p.m. and there is still an hour until the end of the novice protection period. A private message came in, and Qin Yao clicked on it to check. It turned out that Song Jing had sent her three consecutive messages. Song Jing. Sisters, have you finished the task, Song Jing? Do you still have ibuprofen and sanitary napkins? I took a bit too much this time and my stomach hurts a lot. Song Jing. I can give you an extra bottle of water. Qin Yao is not lacking in water now, but she is lacking in other things, so she plans to ask Song Jing what other resources besides water are available. Qin Yao. The task has been completed. Do you have any other supplies besides water? Song Jing replied to her quickly, I have also completed the task. In addition to water, I also have pots, instant noodles, canned meat, tents, sleeping bags, vegetable seeds, socks, plastic buckets, and personal clothing. Seeing the socks and close-fitting clothes, Qin Yao's eyes lit up. It's really not possible to wear close-fitting clothes without changing them. For example, she can only play in a vacuum now. 
Qi Niao. Are there any extra socks and close fitting clothing? Song Jing. Yes, there are twenty pairs of men's white socks. The size of the intimate clothing is only L, do you need underwear? Qi Niao was somewhat envious of Song Jing's good luck. Previously, she thought it was unlucky for Song Jing to open ten large gift packages in a row. Now, it seems that she is much luckier than her. Qi Niao. I want two pairs of socks, two sets of close-fitting clothes, and I'll give you two ibuprofen and two bags of sanitary napkins. Song Jing. Great. I found several sisters who didn't issue sanitary napkins or ibuprofen. Let's deal now Qin Yao replied OK and entered the items and quantity in the trading area. After both parties confirmed, the transaction was successful. The next second, Qin Yao's personal clothes and socks appeared at his hand. She quickly picked them up and saw that the socks were new. The personal clothes were indeed L size, and there were tags on them. Just looking at Peppa Pig's underpants and leopard print underwear, Qin Yao was silent for two seconds. It's good to wear it anyway. In this isolated island, let alone wearing Peppa Pig, no one even sees her running naked. But Qin Yao dare not run naked, because she is afraid of being killed by the system. Song Jing. Did you get it? Isn't it cute? Sisters, you're so generous. I'm afraid you don't need it enough, so I asked other people. But many people either didn't have it or the lion spoke loudly. You will be my regular trading partner in the future Qin Yao smiled, she was not generous either. Although socks and close-fitting clothes were not very urgent necessities, she did need them, so there was no need to buckle and search for bargaining. Besides, Song Jing appeared to be the emperor of Europe, and maintaining a good trading relationship with her would be beneficial and harmless for Qin Yao, a non-chieftain. Qin Yao. Sure. Time passed by minute by second, and soon it was midnight. The chat bar suddenly quieted down, and everyone watched nervously. Ten minutes later, someone sent a message. Wang Hai. The punishment from the system is too harsh. My tent was struck by lightning just now, and unfortunately, it affected me. Now, not only is there no tent, but my hair is burnt. Sun Siwen. I sprained my foot while going to the bathroom just now, and both ankles are swollen. It's over, I can't walk tomorrow. Li Xiaona. I'm even more miserable. I walked barefoot on the beach and was bitten by a scorpion. I don't know if I can still live until tomorrow. Zheng Qiuming. Can I say I saw a female ghost just now? I was scared to pee. The players who did not complete the task were all punished by the system, and the key is that each person's punishment is different. At this point, Qin Yao noticed that the number in the upper left corner was missing a few more digits. 1000000-99976 During the three-day novice protection period, 24 out of 100,000 people died. At this point, the weather forecast on the panel turned to rain late at night, and strong winds blew outside the tent. In less than 10 seconds, raindrops as big as beans hit the tent with a crackling sound. Qin Yao took out a flashlight and checked the situation outside the tent. The thunderous sound of thunder rang out, and she was so scared that she quickly withdrew into the tent. LV Wei. Why did it thunder and rain? What should I do? I don't have a tent. Yang Xian. Hide in the forest. At the end of the weekend. Don't listen to the nonsense upstairs. It's dangerous to hide in the woods during rain, and it's easy to be struck by lightning when it's raining. LV Wei. Who has an extra tent? I have food here, and I'll exchange it with him. Su Jian. I don't have a tent, but I have a raincoat. If you want it, let's have a private chat. Qin Yao didn't have the heart to continue watching everyone chat. It was raining heavily outside, and she was worried that the tent would be washed down. Unexpectedly, as soon as the beginner's period ended, the system began to work. 
Qin Yao resisted the urge to curse and quickly put all the things in the tent in the storage bin. After putting on her clothes, Qin Yao took out a raincoat and rain shoes. The raincoat was placed over the military coat, making her look incredibly bulky. However, keeping warm is important now, Qin Yao has no time to care about whether it looks good or not. Two hours later, the rain stopped and the thunder gradually subsided. Qin Yao opened the zipper of his tent to check the situation outside. The fire in the fire had already extinguished, and the beach had turned into a puddle. The whole island was dark, and only the sound of surging waves could be heard. Qin Yao was worried that there would be an emergency in the next midnight. She went out of the tent to revive the fire. But after a rainstorm, the branches were wet, and the soil in the forest was washed onto the beach by the rain. Now she could not walk any step. Qin Yao could only dispel the idea of starting a fire. She watched in place for a few minutes before returning to her tent. The island tonight was a bit scary, and the sound of the sea breeze blowing over the sea was like a woman's sob. Qin Yao took off her rain shoes, took out the mattress and blanket, put some warm babies on her body, and directly wore a military coat and got into the blanket. I thought she would have insomnia in the second half of the night, but the soft blanket seemed to have the ability to hypnotize, and Qin Yao quickly fell asleep. The next morning at 8 o'clock, as soon as Qin Yao opened her eyes, she felt something scratching the tent. She took out the axe from the storage compartment and just opened the zipper of the tent, she was startled by the scene in front of her. The entire beach has been occupied by densely packed red crabs, even dozens of them have climbed onto tents, and a few are planning to burrow into them. Qin Yao felt her scalp tingling, so she quickly zipped up the tent and then took off her raincoat and military coat. At this point, a system message pops up on the panel. The island you are on is already occupied by the giant poisonous red crab. In order to defend the island, please eliminate them before midnight tonight. Each red crab eliminated can earn 0.1 points. 10,000 points can open the system mall. After completing all tasks, the remaining points can be exchanged for RMB, and one point can be exchanged for one yuan after reading the system message, Qin Yao's eyebrows were tied. The largest one of these red crabs weighs at least 5 or 6 pounds, while the smallest one is only about the size of an egg. Eliminating one red crab earns 0.1 points. This system is too cumbersome, isn't it? Also, how should she be eliminated? Drive the red crabs back into the sea, or chop them all to death. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 008 Devil's Island 8 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8008 Devil's Island 8 the system can recycle red crabs. Players are requested to clean them up as soon as possible. Qin Yao quickly came out of the tent to prevent the red crabs from damaging it. She used an axe to lift the red crabs on the tent to the ground, then folded the tent and put it in the storage rack. At this moment, Qin Yao felt a sharp pain in her leg. She lowered her head and saw a red crab crawling onto her calf. Its sharp claws pierced through her pants and plunged directly into the meat. Fortunately, the poison of the red crab was in its crab paste, and it was not poisoned when stabbed. Qin Yao took out a box from the storage rack, kicked open a few red crabs, and picked up two wooden sticks from the ground. She used the sticks as clamps and struggled to put the red crab into the box. Every time ten were inserted, the system would retrieve them once, and then an additional points column appeared under her personal information. Qin Yao worked hard for half an hour before earning five points. As time passed, the temperature on the island also grew higher and higher. Qin Yao could only accelerate her speed, but the wooden stick in her hand was very clumsy to use. When she thought of something, she clicked on the panel and posted a message about trading gloves or tongs in the trading area. In less than a minute, dozens of people sent her private messages, but among these messages, someone even asked if her profile picture was in person. Qin Yao is a bit anxious about whether she has a boyfriend or other boring questions. 
If she uses a wooden stick to pick up a red crab, even if she is busy until midnight, she won't be able to pick up one-tenth. Summer. I have protective gloves and I need a knife. Do you have a knife? There are many snakes here. Chin Yao doesn't have any extra knives, but she has a box of snake repellent powder. Chin Yao. No knife, but I have snake repellent powder. Do you want to trade it? Exchange a pair of labor protection gloves for a bottle of snake repellent powder. The other party replied quickly. Summer. Does snake repellent powder work? Chin Yao. I don't know, I haven't used it yet. Summer. Change it, if it doesn't work, I'll use a stick to drive them into the sea and drown them. Qin Yao almost burst out laughing when he saw this reply. Most snakes can swim, let alone those by the seaside. She put the snake repellent powder in the trading column, and the other party quickly sent the labor protection gloves over. Wearing the gloves, Qin Yao felt that he was picking up red crabs more than ten times faster. Soon, she finished picking up all the red crabs around the fire. Looking at the twelve points on the panel, Qin Yao was full of energy. Unfortunately, these red crabs cannot be eaten, otherwise this one would only look so big, and there must be a lot of crab paste inside. At eleven o'clock in the morning, the temperature on the island had broken through thirty degrees. Qin Yao was sweating heavily and had backache. Throughout the morning, few people spoke in the chat column. Some people met red crabs like her, others were attacked by snakes, and even more were experiencing rainstorm and hail. There should be over 100,000 red crabs on the entire island. Qin Yao was not sure if she could complete the task before midnight, but in order not to be punished, she fought hard. Qin Yao rested on her hips for a few minutes after picking up half an hour. The amount of exercise she had done in the past few days exceeded the total amount of exercise she had lived for twenty years. It was estimated that she would lose several tails of weight again today. The beach was covered with red crabs, and she couldn't cook. She took out the few remaining chocolate to satisfy her hunger, and once she regained some strength, she continued to drag the box to pick up the red crabs. At noon, Qin Yao's integral only jumped to 1352. She was a bit frustrated. At this speed, she was determined not to complete the task today. At this point, Qin Yao was so tired that she couldn't stand up. But when she saw the number in the top left corner of the panel decreasing in a straight line, she gritted her teeth and continued to work. In the afternoon, Qin Yao's speed increased significantly, and many people in the chat bar were suffering from heatstroke. Qin Yao's gloves were also in tattered condition. At this time, Xia Xia found her again and wanted to trade another bottle of snake repellent powder with her. Qin Yao. How many snakes are there in your area, Summer? There should be hundreds of them. I poured snake repellent powder on my body. The snakes didn't dare to approach me, but the repellent powder only lasted for a few hours. It's over, I'm dead. These snakes are all venomous, and I'm sure I'll die here today. Is there such a big difference in quantity? Qin Yao looked at the red beach in front of him, feeling dizzy and nauseous. She seems to have heatstroke too. Quickly taking out the Huxiang Jingqi water and taking a sip, Qin Yao felt his brain wake up a bit. Qin Yao. Don't you need to clean up snakes? Summer. Yes, but that's a snake not a gecko. I dare not touch them. I just tried to use a stick to drive them into the sea, but they were very fierce and even attacked me. To save my life, I had to use snake repellent powder to avoid them. Compared to systematic punishment, I didn't want to be bitten to death by snakes. What she said was quite reasonable. Qin Yao smiled and quickly put the snake repellent powder on the trading column. After the transaction was successful, a new pair of labor protection gloves appeared in her hand. The pair in his hand can still be used for a few hours. Qin Yao put away the new one and continued to bend down to pick up the red crab. The sea breeze blew over Qin Yao's face, and the broken hair in front of her forehead was blown into a mess. 
Qin Yao didn't care about tidying up her hair, she just wanted to quickly pick up the red crab. As she watched the increasing points, her expression became more and more relaxed. Although her legs were already tired and trembling, and her wrists were too painful to exert strength, she dared not slack off or slack off for a moment as long as she thought of the system's punishment. The system says that as long as all tasks are completed, the points earned in the game can be exchanged for money, which is very attractive to Qinyao. If the previous effort to complete tasks was to survive, at this moment, her goal has changed. She wants money, a lot of money. Perhaps this willpower was too strong, and at 5.30 p.m., Qin Yao's points jumped directly to 6103. At this point, there should be only 40,000 to 50,000 red crabs left. Qin Yao planned to rest for a few minutes and rubbed his sore wrist. Qin Yao clicked on the chat bar. Top left corner, 100000 99958 Seeing the number decreasing again, Qin Yao's mood was somewhat complicated. It was not only a number, but also a number of lives. On the fourth day, 40.2 people had already died. At this moment, in the chat bar, everyone is also discussing dead people. Li Guohao. The brother who has been trading goods with me is also gone. As soon as I clicked on the private message section, I found his profile picture black. Qin Xiu. Are you all alone? Is there anyone like me who is together as a family? Zhang Wu. Is there an age limit for this survival game? When there was a sudden earthquake in Fairy Town, my wife and son were all by my side, but only my wife and I came to the island. My son is missing, and he doesn't know where he is now. Can the system give me an answer? I am really worried about my son. Wen Tang. I went on a trip with my grandparents, but only I came to the island. My grandparents are both over 70 years old. Su Xinchen. On the day of the accident, I happened to be on my 18th birthday, and my younger brother was 16 years old. He didn't enter the game. Zhao Lili. There must be an age limit. I estimate that people under 18 and over 50 have not entered the game. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. 009 Devil's Island 9. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9009 Devil's Island 9, Luo Hongxia. Have you all completed your tasks? Huang Hauza. It's already done. There are tens of thousands of mice here, and the system asked me to clean them all up. I finished cleaning them in less than half a day. Yu Xiaomiao. Big brother upstairs, how did you do it? Ding Pinglin. Let's talk big. I also have tens of thousands of mice here, and I only cleaned up one dot third of them. The mice run so fast, how could it take only half a day to clean them up? Obviously, everyone thought this big brother was bragging. Huang Hauza. My lucky value is 70. It took me half an hour to find all 20 big gift packages. Coincidentally, I happen to have rat poison and a fishing net here. I put the rat poison in the fishing net, and when the mice ran in, I collected the net and cleaned up thousands of them in minutes. Ha ha ha. Let's take your time to complete the task, a group of non-chieftains. As soon as these words were spoken, the chat bar instantly became lively. Some people were dissatisfied with the system's allocation, some were not convinced. Why is their luck so low? while others were so popular that they just insulted this hateful big brother in the chat bar. Qin Yao was also confused. Her lucky value was only 6, while the other party had 70. This difference is too big, right? If it weren't for tens of thousands of red crabs waiting to be cleaned up, she would also like to send a private message to greet this big brother. Qin Yao calmed his mood and continued to clean up the red crabs on the beach. It was now 6 p.m., and there were still six hours left until midnight. There was not enough time, especially after 8 p.m. when it was already dark. Qin Yao put on new gloves and hummed while working to speed herself up. 
Integral plus 1 integral plus 3 integral plus 5 at 8.30 p.m., the island suddenly fell into darkness. Qin Yao took out a flashlight and rope, and tied it to her head. Although the light range was very small, it did not affect her cleaning of the red crab. At 9.30 p.m., there were only a few hundred red crabs left. Qin Yao was so tired that her hands began to cramp, but she still dared not slack off, and by this time her points had reached 96.50. Many people have already completed tasks in the chat bar. From 5.30 p.m. until now, the number in the upper left corner has changed again. Qin Yao endured exhaustion and hunger, and worked hard to clean up the last few hundred red crabs. Watching the last red crab being collected by the system, Qin Yao's legs softened and he collapsed backwards. Congratulations contestant, 100,000 red crabs have been cleared and you have earned 10,000 points. Do you want to open the system mall? Enable square root. Reject X, Qin Yao raised his trembling right hand and lightly clicked to open it. In the next moment, a shopping mall symbol was added to the information bar below the panel. The system store is similar to a treasure. There are a variety of goods on the shelves. There is a price tag at the bottom of each commodity. When he sees a box of matches with 100 points and only 10 matches, Qin Yao cannot help but complain in his heart that the system is an unscrupulous and unscrupulous merchant. She currently has zero points, so she cannot purchase items from the mall. However, there is also a recycling section in the mall. Qin Yao clicked to check and found that all the items found by the contestant on the island can be sold in the mall, such as wild vegetables, wild fruits, mushrooms, medicinal herbs, fish and shrimp for example, if she sells the red crab she cleaned today to the mall, the recycling price is also 0.1 points per piece. After reading the information about the mall, Qin Yao stumbled up from the ground and was busy cleaning up the red crabs today. She not only didn't filter the seawater, but also didn't sun dry the sea salt. She just looked at it and found that in the mall, a bag of 200 g salt requires 200 points, and a bottle of mineral water requires 100 points. She is now in dire straits and can only rely on herself. Qin Yao went to the forest to find some leaves and dry firewood, went back to the resting place last night, took out the iron stove to make a fire, boiled a bowl of noodles with the remaining water, and ate dinner casually. After eating, Qin Yao felt much more comfortable in her stomach and regained some strength. She took out the seawater filter and went to the beach to fetch a box of water to filter fresh water and sea salt. The filter will automatically operate, and during this time, Qin Yao will take out the personal underwear and socks that were not dried last night from the storage column and bake them next to the iron stove. Although she can't take a shower, she can give it a simple scrub tonight. Her body is sticky and covered in sweat. If she doesn't scrub again, Qin Yao is worried about getting the blanket dirty, and she won't be able to sleep well at night. The filtered fresh water is about 10 liters, and Qin Yao poured out half of it. She must save water, after all, filtering fresh water requires burning gasoline, and one liter of gasoline requires 100 points, which she cannot afford. After washing up, Qin Yao felt much more relaxed all over. She estimated that half a pound of dirt had been washed off her body. She opened the panel and looked at the time, and it was already 11.30. Qin Yao put all the things outside into the tent, and when she finished tinkering, it was exactly 12 o'clock. Qin Liang The system is too pitted. I didn't complete the task and not only cleared all points, but also owed the system 200 points. It's too pitying. I protest. Liang Wei. I almost didn't complete the task. It's too risky. Have you all opened the system mall? I've been busy all day and only have 3,000 points. Song Fei Fei. I didn't complete the task either. Not only did I owe the system points, but my lucky score was still 15. Today, it dropped directly to 12. Huang Hauza. You guys are too miserable, aren't you? Not only did I open the mall, but I also ate roasted chicken. Aren't you all hungry tonight without food? Xiang Nan. 
Go, O Huangdu. Gao Mengyi. O Huangdu died for me. Jia Xiaoshu. O Huangdu is a beast. Huang Hauza. I'm getting anxious, I'm getting angry from embarrassment. At this point, a player ranking table pops up on the panel. First place. Gu Zheng second place. Zong Xiaohui third place. Qi Shi fourth place. Zhou Wenjun fifth place. Song Lianjue seventy six thousand five hundred and eighty fifth place. Qin Yao as shown above, the ranking is updated every day at twelve o'clock. Qin Yao looked at his ranking with a somewhat solemn expression. At this moment, there was also a commotion in the chat bar, and everyone was guessing who the top ten leaders were. Gun Lan. These people can't be soldiers or police, can they? Ordinary people can't be so powerful. Gong Min. I thought that Huang, the Emperor of Europe, was so powerful. Even the top 100 didn't have his name, TSK TSK. Ding Xuanxuan. I'm 98,505. I don't think I'm far from being eliminated. Can the system take care of us middle-aged people over 40? It's only the fourth day. I feel I'm dying. Su Hongmei. Agree. I am 49 years old and used to work as a cleaning staff in a scenic area. I spent two days researching this panel and information bar. I don't have the ability to do tasks. In the chat bar, there were all sorts of things happening, and Qin Yao lay in the tent feeling disheartened. She didn't expect her ranking to be so low, so she quickly opened her personal information to check the changes in various values. Weight 49.6 kg strength value 13 lucky value 8 speed value 10 health value 53 comprehensive ability 10% all other values are increasing, but the health value has been decreasing. Besides not eating well and not keeping up with the nutrition, is it the reason for staying up late? Is there Bowsy reading a book? End of this chapter. Chapter 10 010 Devil's Island 10 You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 10 010 Devil's Island 10 Just as Qin Yao was pondering how to improve his physical fitness, a message popped up in the private message section. Song Jing Sisters, have you finished the task, Qin Yao? Completed, and you. Song Jing. I have also completed it. It's so close. If it weren't for the ibuprofen you gave me, I would definitely have finished today. May I ask how old you are? Qin Yao raised his eyebrows, and she noticed a few days ago that Song Jing was a bit familiar. Qin Yao. 20, Song Jing. Coincidentally, I'm also 20. Have you opened them all yet? Qin Yao. Open. Song Jing. You're too amazing, right? How did you do it? This answer was somewhat unexpected by Qin Yao. Qin Yao. What is your ranking? It took three minutes for the message to be returned over there. Song Jing. 80057. Where is your ranking? Surprisingly ranking behind her, Qin Yao touched his chin and suspected that Song Jing was not telling her the truth. After informing the other party of the ranking, Qin Yao suggested taking an early break and closed the panel. Before going to bed, Qin Yao took out a bottle of safflower oil from the medicine box. His wrist and calf were swollen and painful, and he needed to apply some medicine to rub the swollen area open. Otherwise, when he woke up tomorrow, his wrist would definitely swell into pig's feet, and he didn't know what was waiting for her tomorrow. After applying the medicine, Qin Yao pulled the blanket, covered his military coat with it, and closed his eyes to sleep. At eight o'clock in the morning, the sun shone on the tent and Qin Yao woke up. She quickly unzipped the tent and looked outside. There were no red crabs or anything else, and the beach was peaceful. Qin Yao put on his clothes and came out of the tent. His sneakers had already dried, and when he put them on, 
she stretched lazily and opened the panel to check if the system had assigned any tasks. The chat bar is still lively, and everyone is curious about why the island is so quiet today. Some also suspect that this is a trap in the system. Let's relax our vigilance first and then suddenly release the task. After Qin Yao took out the filter, she was ready to continue filtering fresh water and sea salt. The filter was running, and she quickly washed her face and brushed her teeth. Then, she made a fire and boiled two white water eggs. Fortunately, there is sunscreen in the backpack. If you don't apply sunscreen on the island, tanning is a small matter, and peeling from the sun can be disastrous. After wiping off the sun protection and cooking the eggs, Qin Yao finished breakfast and was ready to take a walk on the beach. She was worried that the system might assign hidden tasks, and waiting for death was not her personality. Qin Yao liked to take the initiative. The island is surrounded by the sea on all sides, and the deep blue sea is vast and boundless. However, Qin Yao knew that this was a prison. If she didn't live for thirty days, this would be her tomb. There was no rising tide today, and the sea was very calm. Apart from some shells on the shore, Qin Yao did not find any fish, shrimp, or crabs. She circled around the entire beach of the island and didn't notice anything wrong. It seemed that there was no hidden mission today. Qin Yao decided to go to the forest to see. If he found wild vegetables and fruits, he could also sell them to the mall to exchange points. As soon as Qin Yao entered the forest, she saw a field of wild chives. The chive flowers had already bloomed, and she looked at a vast expanse of white. Qin Yao didn't expect her luck to be so good today. She clicked on the panel to input the wild chives, and the recycling price quickly popped up on it. Wild chives earn 2 points per kilogram, chive flowers earn 100 points per kilogram, and chive roots earn 3 points per kilogram. The price difference is a bit large. After picking all the chives, it's probably only one pound. Qin Yao sighed obediently and took out a box from the storage rack to start picking the chives. The chives here are different from the ones Qin Yao is familiar with. They grow very tall, with exceptionally wide leaves and very plump roots. Soon, Qin Yao picked all the chive flowers in this area. She clicked on the recycle button, and after the system scanned it, it quickly provided the weight. A total of one pound and three tails, the system gave her 130 points. Qin Yao took out a bottle of water and took a sip. When her points were abundant, she immediately needed to buy a sunshade hat, as well as towels, combs, facial oil, and headbands there were too many things to buy, and Qin Yao didn't dare to think anymore. She took out a multifunctional folding knife and started cutting leeks. The system requires that leeks be clean and free of soil, so she can only cut them first and then dig them. By the way, I also need to buy a sickle. Although the folding knife is sharp, it is still not as useful as a sickle. Suddenly, the sound of birds chirping in the forest startled Qin Yao. She stared at the swaying treetops for a long time, and a few red birds flew back and forth, chattering incessantly. At this moment, the sound of sizzle 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 echoed in the nearby grass. Qin Yao held a handful of leeks and took two steps back, while a golden spear-headed pit viper was looking up at Qin Yao. Qin Yao felt her whole body's blood flowing back. She wanted to run and scream, but her knees were weak and her limbs were weak. Her throat seemed to be stuffed with cotton, and she couldn't make any sound. The golden spearhead viper is a typical island snake, characterized by its small size but strong toxicity, several times stronger than other venomous snakes. Bites on humans can cause serious wound ulceration and even death. At this moment, Qin Yao suddenly remembered that she had snake repellent powder, but she dared not act rashly. If the snake thought she was going to attack it and suddenly bounced up and bit her, it would be ruined. The sweat on Qin Yao's forehead began to drip in clusters, and she slowed down her breathing. At this point, the competition between the two sides was patience. Whoever couldn't hold on first would lose. By the way, she had a folding knife in her hand. 
If the snake rushed to bite her, even if it was dead, she still wanted this snake to support her. Time passed by minute by second, and Qin Yao's legs began to numb. At eleven o'clock in the morning, the sun was scorching, and she was dizzy from the sun. Just as Qin Yao thought he was going to confront the snake to the death, the snake suddenly turned around and left. Watching it crawl into the nearby grass with her own eyes, Qin Yao breathed a sigh of relief. She bent down, supported her knees with both hands, and gasped for breath. In order to prevent the golden spearhead viper from killing a rebound rifle, Qin Yao took out snake repellent powder and applied it to his clothes. The strong aroma of Rialgar permeated the forest, and Qin Yao was already dizzy. Smelling this smell made him even more dizzy. At this moment, everyone in the chat bar was chatting enthusiastically because the system did not assign tasks, and most people had nothing to do, so they started chatting and boasting. There are also people like Qin Yao who dig wild vegetables to prepare for sale to the system, but many people have not opened the shopping mall and can only eagerly watch others busy. Of course, there are also many people inside who say cold words and stir up trouble. Chen Hongfei Why do you work for the system? Even if you work hard, you can't accumulate a few points. If you ask me, you still need to keep your energy up. Only with strong physical fitness can you leave the island alive. Su Han My lucky value is 90. I have tried it and even if I don't do anything, I can still complete the task. So I'll just lie flat and enjoy it for a while, and keep lying flat and enjoying it all the time. Yi Peng I'm also putting on a bad show, anyway my ranking is at the bottom of the crane. Ma Xing damn the system, the lucky value given to me is so low. Why is it that others are higher than me? Looking at the comments filled with resentment and malice inside, Qin Yao took a deep breath and closed the panel to continue cutting leaks. End of this chapter